I'm Jim Morentz, the Executive Director of the Sabre Community and the Exchange Core Community, and today we've got a fun session on the Sabre mobile app and the web application that's available to all Sabre members. We're also joined uh, by the California Earthquake Clearinghouse that is holding its bi-weekly meeting at this same time, so a few of those folks have been using the Sabre uh, tools as uh, Spot On Response has provided those tools to the California Earthquake Clearinghouse for quite a while, so uh, looking forward to an interesting discussion after we finish this uh, initial overview. And what we're going to do is take a look at a few things. First of all, uh, a quick look at Sabre. I do see uh, we've got a handful of uh, new people uh, who we want to give some quick level setting, four or five minutes on Sabre. Then we'll take a look at the mobile app and the web application. And then specifically five use cases for Sabre status reporting that are things that all Sabre members can do and I'm going to tell you how to enroll in that and then in particular how we're focusing on getting Sabre members enrolled to play in National Level Exercise 2019 which through Sabre anyone can play in from anywhere. You don't have to be involved in the central United States. And then we'll have an open mic. Uh, a couple different ways. There's, there's a way you can raise your hand and uh, that shows that uh, you want to talk or send a question in, uh, although I think we now have figured out a way that uh, we can open up everybody for a general discussion. So, to get started, a uh, quick Sabre overview. The reason behind Sabre is that businesses have a hard time getting out of a disaster. And in particular, the longer a business is out of business, the greater the chance of failure. So the whole focus of Sabre started by the private sector is to say let's find our business status and share it out to government for the real purpose of influencing government recovery priorities as well as enabling business to business collaboration to try to get everybody back in business faster. Sabre as it evolved uh, we our members are those that really uh, are drawn from three different lifelines uh, food, water, sheltering, energy, and the health and medical. And those lifelines are a new way that FEMA is looking at disaster response, uh, and Sabre supports that. Sabre's won awards. Uh, 2017 FEMA Individual and Community Preparedness Award for Technology Innovation. And then last year, the International Association of Emergency Managers Award. So we got some credibility here, and we want to be able to build on that through your participation. So how's it work? Well, there are three different ways that, that information gets into Sabre. The first way, a fully automated connection. Nobody has to think of anything and the information drives directly from business outage systems or sources, uh, which could anything, be anything from a security system uh, to a full reporting system, to Sabre. And sitting in Sabre uh, is a set of tools that allow us to share this information. The second way, and this is the most popular way, is a spreadsheet of status from the company operation center that we work with the company, establish a way to uh, translate that information into things that are useful to government, and then somebody just goes in, clicks on the Sabre website, uh, uploads their current status as often as one wishes to using whatever information a company wants to provide and that gets into Sabre. And the third way, the way we're going to focus on today, are the commercial mobile apps and this is in a partnership uh, with our uh, Spot On Response partner that has made available to Sabre, to its members, uh, access to the Sabre mobile app. All of that information comes into Exchange Core, which is a set of information sharing tools, and then gets made available out to just about any kind of software that government agencies or other companies use to visualize, make lists, do whatever they want to do. 
because SAVER is data. At its core, SAVER is data. So providing that is absolutely critical. So what kind of data? Well, two different levels now. Uh, used to be open, closed, and limited status, plus maybe a little bit more information that somebody might want to provide. But now over the last uh, year or so, we've researched, uh, worked with companies, established a, um, a standardized way of dealing with the information, even published that as a national information exchange model format for what is the context of that business status. So in a sense, open, closed, limited asks the question, what? And then the business status context answers the question, why? So to give you a little overview on the open, closed status today, there are two different ways that we get this information. Uh, first way is authoritative information that's provided by the company directly to SABER. There are approximately 70,000 locations across the country. You see some of the, the bigger name members there, but more than 40 companies. And that information is consumed by more than 20 state emergency management agencies, a dozen federal agencies. And just in the last day, we've had uh, an additional state and a couple of, uh, couple of additional agencies uh, sign up. So authoritative information. Second one is proxy information. This is information that says, we have an indication that there might be a problem here. Hughes Satellite gives us transceiver status for about 50,000 locations or all sorts of kinds of organizations. Well, I can't tell you that when the satellite transceiver isn't working that the business is not in business, but we can say, if there's a hurricane going on and the transceiver is not working, this place might have a problem. Same way with Healthcare Ready on reporting on prescriptions filled in the last 12 hours, uh, 66,000 locations. And those who are SABRE members, we get, collect that information. And again, it's a proxy for closure. Uh, Combining the two, being able to look on a map and say, oh, here's an authoritative close by Costco, and right next to it is a hotel that isn't transmitting its, uh, using its receiver status, that indicates that that might be a, an important bad spot, as it were, and perhaps both of those are not operational. So it's part of the, the ability to understand authoritative information, interpret from it, to provide a overall perspective of the what's going on. Now, when we look at why, we established uh, through our members and, and research and testing, a series of questions that really help unfold the problem. The first one is, is the store open? And again, you have to remember these are businesses. So if they are open, they don't really want to bother asking, being asked, asked questions. So we are focusing on the problems that businesses have. Is the store open? The answer is yes, no impact, poof, we don't bother them again. Is there damage to the store or commodities? Well, if there's enough that you can open, then you're closed. So again, we don't need much more information until we can assess whether this thing can be fixed. Are employees available? If they're not, you're not going to open. If you have a building commodities employees, if I have all three of the first, are the lights on? We go have water and gas. If not, then we can start on focusing solving the problem of getting a substitute for those utilities. If we can get open, all well, those four things at the beginning, are we going to see customers show up or they've all been evacuated? In which case, why should we open? If you can get customers, can you carry out a financial transaction? Or are we going to handle cash, which lots of stores aren't doing? And finally, if we're selling, are we going to be resupplied? Are we going to run out of stuff within uh, X period of time? So those are all the questions that are now carried forward with Saber. We'll be taking a look at those a little bit more detail. Again, two different levels. The first level being that open-closed business. And some businesses may say, hey, that's all I'm giving you. Others 
are going to unfold the why about the problem. And one of the ways to do that is the Sabre mobile app and the web application. So there are, we're going to look today at five different cases on how people can use the Sabre tool set that uh, Spot On Response has provided. So the first case is going to be a store manager who has done nothing but download the app. No prior thought. I'm going to talk about how that person can very quickly and easily report on their status. The second one is a store manager who has the desire to provide more information. They're not just going to provide the open and close. They may take, they may have done that, but come back and say, oh, I can now tell you a little bit more about why I'm closed because I know if I tell you Sabre, which transmits the information to business or governments across uh, the area, maybe I can get my needs prioritized in order to get back in business sooner. Whole purpose. Third case is a district store manager or a company EOC manager that wants to close several stores and really is going to be the central location where people will be reporting in. So all their store managers call in and they're going to start uh, to close their stores, again with no preparation. Uh, this is just right off the shelf, hey, this is what I have, this is what I can do. In case four and five, there is preparation. These are things where the company has subscribed to the Sabre and Spot On Response tool sets. And therefore, they have built information into it and are using it on a daily basis to both on a website go in and manage back at their business emergency operations center, uh, as well as on the mobile app and have uh, people just out there reporting in on their status. So we're going to take a look at each one of those and uh, play right through with the uh, technology itself. Uh, and let me slide that over there and start out by explaining what we have here. On the right-hand side is uh, the Sabre web application. On the left-hand side, this is a mirror image of my phone right now. Nothing's happening in Sabre. Uh, as a result, there's, there's nothing across the bottom. Uh, that which is where the uh, information uh, lies, uh, the textual information lies. And what I'm going to do is go to that first case. And that first case was the one that, if you recall, we had a store manager. Now what they're going to do is close their store without having done anything but register with the app, they walk out of their store and say, hey, this is, we're now closed. And they want to share that fact, not just with their own uh, organization, but they want to share that fact with other businesses and government. Uh, this is, is uh, in particular, uh, you know, single proprietor, single uh, owner proprietors uh, that would incredibly increase the amount of knowledge that governments have by reporting in on all those small businesses. So I'm now on the left hand side. I think my name is Tom. And what we have for Tom is over here. Map. And Tom says, whoa, I just closed my store. I'm walking out the door. I'm going to touch this spot report. I'm going to say that I'm closed up in the upper right hand corner. You note that uh, it has automatically filled in that uh, it's closed. I pretended this was a 7-Eleven that Tom Kinsel is closing. And if I come in here, I can even dictate what's going on. The police came, told us that there is a flood nearby and we should be closing our store and seeking higher ground. That simple. 
All I then do, there are a couple other things down here that I could uh, fill out if I wanted to, but that quickly while I'm walking across the parking lot, I'm going to submit that information. And what is done is taking me back. And over on the right-hand side, we're going to see a little dot, a um, little stop sign kind of thing, a uh, triangle, I guess that is, or a uh, diamond. And there is close 7-Eleven Tom Kinsel. Everybody that is now involved in Sabre is going to be seeing this because we're only looking at spot on response tool set now, but that is also going out across the rest of Saber as you've been seeing in the past and as we're going to look at uh, in our next webinar. Out to WebEOC and to ArcGIS Online and uh, to Google Earth and all those other tool sets that uh, are part of the Saber operation. But that quickly, Tom Kinsel over here walked, touched, clicked closed, and submitted the information that uh, is the basic what as quickly as that. So no thought, no preparation, no nothing. Uh, except for getting that information that is now available and shared to everybody else. So that was case one. Case two is where that store is closing, but the store manager or store emergency manager has a, either a little bit more time or they have closed and they're going to want to provide more information using the new business status form. Again, no preparation, no advanced preparation, uh, but all they have to do is register. They can have the browser or the mobile app. I'm going to do it with the browser this time. It's going to use the GPS location. And we're going to go through and fill out the new business status form. So let's do that. And uh, I am up here. That uh, Tom Kinsel was, was down here in the Washington area. Um, so that's why you saw him show up there. Uh, this is me. Uh, these are other, uh, these little icons, just to let you know, these are our other uh, people there. There's uh, Ron Crone. He's down there, somebody else in Atlanta. Uh, and this little thing there, that little person uh, icon that just disappeared while we refresh to see whether they have moved, uh, that is Tom Kinsel, who we talked about uh, earlier. And I am now going to be this one using use case two. I'm a store manager. And what I'm going to do is come up here to the green plus. I'm going to click on business status. And now, instead of just clicking on closed, I'm going to say that uh, I am a food store. And this is uh, Jim's Grocery. And now, set of tabs up here that lead me through those questions. First one is general description. OK, so we have uh, winter storm has uh, caused damage to back wall. Just one of something. Our status, open, closed, or limited. We'll close this one. Uh, when am I anticipating reopening? I think it won't be until the weekend, but I sure hope I can get Saturday shoppers there. If I have any comments on it, um, you know, hoping to reopen. And these are the problems that we discussed. Those are the, the questions that we had before that says, do you have a problem with your facility? Well, we have a structure that needs some repairs. How about your employees? Are they going to show up for work? Well, yeah, uh, they actually are going to be fine to show up for work as soon as we get this because they won't be kept out. So I don't have to check anything there. Problem with utilities? Nope, got no utility problems except for this back wall is damaged. Using a generator? No, nope, we are completely fine with that. Is there a problem with my customers getting to the store? Well, only because I'm telling them not to come. Problem with financial transactions? Uh, we will be doing absolutely fine when we reopen. And do I have a problem with, with commodities? 
Uh, let's say that we don't have some commodities available because right now we can't get them in our loading dock, let's say. Then I get a little bit on site details. I can add, again, remember, I haven't ever looked at this before. I just subscribed. So I can put my address in, my state, my county, and things like that. Uh, I won't bother doing that. Uh, for spot on response, it already knows where they are because it's using GPS location. Here's these in Christiana, Pennsylvania, latitude and longitude. Uh, so a portion of that is done for this organization. But having answered all those things, I'm going to click Save. And we're going to have a second case where somebody, again, with no preparation other than watching the video of how to do this and being able to add themselves in spontaneously. Now, these two are very important for those of you who are with business emergency operations centers, or state governments, or FEMA, or any of those people, because by saying to your people, your businesses, hey, all you have to do, and we'll show you this at the end, is fill out your name, organization, and subscribe to Spot on Response. If something happens, you can very, very quickly report into us. You don't have to have a web UC board or any of that stuff. This is a way to get in. And having said that about a web UC board, this data can then go into web UC through the Sabre Exchange Core. So two use cases there, both of which are done by people who are doing one thing at a time and are getting the um, reports in for their specific locations. Okay, let's go on and take a look at the third one now. Third case. Third case, this is where there's a district manager out there and again, no preparation. Uh, they, they just signed up because the hurricane is coming and they have the software. And they want to close several stores maybe some of them providing some information on the custom form, other ones they're not going to. So to do this again, all they do is re register. We're gonna do this with the browser, but again, anything that you do on the browser, you can do on the mobile app. They're gonna set the location of their stores and then do that custom form, either a little bit or a lot, and then they're gonna to go to a new location. So this is somebody who is managing five or six different stores and, again, has done no preparation whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do a set location and I'm just going to pick places over here in the middle of Pennsylvania. We have a store. I'm going to set location there. And we now have a brand new store out here. Uh, I know where that store is. Uh, because it's my store, but that's why we have it. I'm now going to come in here and let's do a business status for this. Uh, this is going to be, well, let's stay with food. And this is uh, Jim's Grocery um, Shippin's Port. I don't know whether I'm anywhere near that. Pennsylvania. Uh, situation is we've got the uh, store closed. And I'm not going to do anything other than that. Uh, I'm going to come down here, say that it's closed. Ah, let's put in a reopening date. We're going to reopen tomorrow because we don't have that many problems, so I'm not going to report. But click. What I've got over here is Jim's Grocery, and it's going to pop up there in a second. And while it's doing that, I'm going to come in. There he goes. There's Jim's Grocery Store. Uh, I'm going to come off here and I'm going to change my location. Again, I'm a manager. I've got five different stores. So I'm going to go off and change this location. Let's going to come down here. Uh, that'll be in Emmitsburg, Maryland. So we'll set that location. And I've got, going to use that same thing, my same business status. 
and this time I'm still going to be a food store. Uh, I'm going to be Jim's. I should have copied this, shouldn't I? In Emmitsburg, Maryland, and this time uh, I'm actually going to uh, say the Jim's grocery store and Seven uh, Eleven. I've got a little complex there, and no other information. Let's just do it at that. Save that one. So you're seeing, if I were sitting there, what's this taking me? Uh, you know, two minutes to go out and get multiple locations of a store with absolutely no preparation whatsoever, other than being able to go in there and do that. You see, we've got two of these things that are close together there, and if I come over here and come in, we've got now those two different stores that are there. Uh, all right, so we've got that unfolding. Uh, you're seeing ways that, again, zero preparation, people can be providing information in pretty quickly of the status of individual stores, whether they've been open or closed, and how they are performing at that given time. So let's go off and take a look at the next um, use case because it gives us an illustration of what can be done with some preparation because this is a case and it says subscribed if you want to have this as private information you subscribe to spot on response and you can do all this and every time you you touch and change something uh, it's private to your organization and then shared out to Exchange Core and all of Sabre uh, when you want it to. So we'll take a look at that and uh, what the process is going to be is that a company EOC manager does the preparation in advance. They have their stores entered uh, and then they can pick stores and close them. So let's come and take a look at this and let me just trying to distinguish between what's free on Saber and what's a subscription. Uh, if Jim's Grocery wanted to sit there and put in 25 stores in advance, they could do that. And when they do that, it would then operate the same way that you're going to see Macy's operate, uh, which we're going to take a look at right now, where all of these stores uh, have been entered. Uh, I am serving as the Middle Atlantic States Regional Manager or something like that. And you see all these different stores. Uh, each one of them has the little Macy's ice icon. It pops up. It tells me that this is Short Pump Town Center, which is down in Richmond, Virginia. And Macy's can use this on a day-to-day -day basis for all the things that they do to uh, help prepare for emergencies, run drills, and all the rest of it. But let's say we now actually have something happen. And our fourth use case is that we've done this preparation. We are able to provide the information uh, back to Exchange Core uh, and Sabre this quickly. And it goes something like this. I'm going to click on a Macy's. Uh, I'm going to say I want to do something about this, so I go to Details and Directions. I've got my Macy's pop-up there. This is uh, the center at Salisbury. And what I'm going to do, well, again, this is where things have already been added. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do my status. I'm going to come over here and close that store, save those changes, and you're going to see a couple of things happen. One is because we have this in advance, we know who these people are, we have the Macy's logos in there. You see, we get the Macy's logos, we've got Macy's, did I not save that? Yeah, closed. Save, there we go. And what we get is 
Macy's closed. You see down here on the bottom of the screen, it shows that. And over here, we get Macy's, and they have a grayed out Macy's icon. And that would then percolate through the system to get added into uh, Sabre, to get pushed out through the Sabre Links' data to provide that information to everybody who's connected to Sabre. So the Sabre manager, or sorry, the Macy's manager is able to do that individually, perhaps. The Macy's district manager does it for everybody. Again, the business concept of operations is entirely up to them. And now the fifth case is basically the same thing, but because of the advanced preparation, uh, all of that information is available on the mobile app. So the company with the mobile app that has done the preparation can pick off of my status in order to make these store changes take place. So let's take a look at that. So I've got my status. I'm going to touch that. What I get is personal status that we'll talk about at another time, but every single employee can be reporting in on their status, that they're reporting to work or they're going to have a delayed arrival or that not working, which is another advantage of the subscription approach to this. But, oh shoot, I didn't switch this guy. He was Tom Kinsel before. I'm going to now change him to Macy's. So you're now getting an inside look at how easy it is to uh, use the, the tool set. And I now am going to come to my status, switch over there, and now I have all the Macy's. Same Macy's that you had out here uh, are now here. Now, if I were a store manager, the only thing that would be here would be my store. You heard before that we were the district manager for this Middle Atlantic States area. So as district manager, I get all the different stores here in the district. So what I'd like to do, I want to pick one of these that uh, we'll be able to easily see. Um, well, let's do one in downtown Washington. How about that? Macy's, DuPont. We're going to close that. You see this turns right now. Ah, let's do a couple of these. Uh, let's do pick another one down here. Where's Washington? Uh, we District Manager, Woodbridge Center. That's in the Washington area. We're going to close that one because we got this big hurricane coming up here. And yeah, that's that's good enough, I think. Um, so let's come in here. Uh, we've got those that have been closed. We're going to come in and take a look at Macy's and let's get rid of those little numbers there. And come on in and what we've got unfolding somewhere here. I will change my view so that I can see all those icons. And buried somewhere in here. I should have done it someplace that was uh, a little bit easier to find. But somewhere in here there's another gray one that we just turned on that was part of uh, this process of, of moving here and finding all these folks. Uh, if that's, that's that one, we should be able to see that one. So that is our fifth use case, and we'll let this percolate through here for a second. That is our fifth use case of being able to have, again, there we go, there's a nice another gray one, two gray ones there that have shown up. And as we look through this list, we see we've got gray, gray, uh, somewhere else down here that's going to, yep, there's the third one that are gray. And should I come in here and say, gee, what I'd really like to do is see only the gray ones. I have all, as you might expect, all the traditional filtering information. So if I come over here and I only want to see a closed, all the closed stores, I'm going to add that over there. Refresh my map. 
and what I'm going to get are only the three closed doors. So all the normal data kind of things that uh, you have, would expect to have in a system like this. So let's come back here, uh, wrap this up, and then go to some questions. Uh, and uh, I can, if, as you ask questions, we can go back and poke around and, and look at uh, any of the tools that uh, are there. So having shown you all that, one important thing is that the Sabre mobile app doesn't change Sabre's basic principle that Sabre is data. With the mobile app, I've shown you how you can, with no advanced preparation, get more data into Sabre to make that available from the mobile app or from the web application as a store manager or as a, neo, a, a, a business command center manager. So all the other ways, the spreadsheet upload and all the other automated uh, ways are still there. The mobile app gives members an advantage to be able to do minimal, open, close status, or teach us about the status context, the why of it, by providing additional information. And that commercial mobile app, um, why people would want to subscribe is that there are lots of business crisis management improvements that can be made uh, using the mobile app. At its base, Sabre and Exchange Score still do all the heavy lifting. The mobile app even is just one more connection into Sabre and Exchange Score. Sabre still builds the automated interfaces. It configures all the spreadsheets. And the mobile app integration is no different than WebEOC integration that allows you to take information from WebEOC and put it into Sabre or E-Team or any of those other tools. With the bottom line being that Sabre remains freely available status data. And you get it in just about any practical form that you want from GeoRSS, KML, GeoJSON, XML, the new name format. So the additional mobile app doesn't change what or who we are. We Sabre still remains data. But it's data that you can now play with a little bit differently. Uh, and with the next session of this, not even two weeks from now, May 23rd, we're going to bring together everybody who's been enrolling. Uh, hopefully all of you who are on today will finish the enrollment. Uh, next week, we're putting out a quick guide for retail status uh, that will be usable both on the uh, web application as well as the mobile app. And then our next session will be to practice. And there are already a dozen or so people have told me that they'll join in and we'll have a, a nationwide exercise, as it were, of creating status information and sharing it out and then we'll be able to, and we'll focus next week uh, in addition to that, on the output side of using that information through WebEOC and ArcGIS Online and, and other tool sets. So that's where we're going with this. Uh, leading up to the uh, national level exercise where people can participate for the eight days or so that the exercise is taking place through Sabre. And we will be doing a uh, live from the exercise, I think that was June 4th, live from the exercise where hopefully, again, we're going to have lots of people participating and driving information in. So I see a couple of questions uh, out there now. So let me, uh, let me turn, Joe, let me turn you on. Uh, I think you can now talk if you'd like to. Nope. All right, let me look at your question then. Um, let's see, Joe's uh, got a several here. Uh, actually, I'll pull it over here so we can all take a look at. Obviously, a respected business establishment can put status information. Oh, good question. Yes, excellent. Um, Sabre's focus uh, has been retail businesses, but we've extended that 
into uh, water companies and financial institutions, government, absolutely. Uh, you can do that and you can have staff use spot on response to send that information to their locations. Yes, uh, as a member, and I know you are a member, uh, you can, uh, you'll have a login, but that can be shared among different staff. Uh, water systems, um, actually, you think you're aware of all the work that we did with um, San Jose water, was it? Uh, but yes, that's uh, Saber has done water work uh, very well. Actually, we have some nice icons of different water work status. Uh, costs can talk to you offline. Uh, a single login is free with your Saber membership. Uh, so it shouldn't prevent you from learning more about it. And then we can talk about uh, what, a, uh, what a subscription to it would be. What solution if the internet availability is down? All right, uh, that's, a, that's a good one. Internet goes down. You can continue to work on the app, recording pictures, uh, making status changes and all the rest. And when it comes back up, it all syncs back in. So there's an offline mode that allows you to continue doing uh, everything that uh, you would expect to be doing. All right, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, I'm going to, uh, attendees have full audio control and may unmute yourselves anytime. So if anybody has any questions, and I'm going to look at Phil's question here. Um, let's see, Phil, which one are you? Can Exchange Core output feed of store outages be used to feed a dashboard app such as those on, yes, uh, that is absolutely uh, one of the core elements because everything from the app goes through Exchange Core and we now through the Central United States Earthquake Consortium publish the status app as a ArcGIS online feature service so that just about anybody can pick that up uh, if they wish. Uh, Amazon using it? No. We'd love to land Amazon as a client. Um, so if you have any leads there, let me know. <laughs> Be happy to, happy to play along. Uh, let's see. Anybody else? You can either raise your hand uh, or if you unmute yourself, you will be able to talk. Yep. Other questions, comments, thoughts from anybody? All right. Well, appreciate you joining us today and certainly hope that uh, you'll sign up, uh, get the mobile app. Uh, we'll get out there with our little quick guide on reporting information. And Joe, you make a really good point. Maybe it shouldn't be retail status. This is report quick guide for reporting status through spot on response to Saber uh, so that uh, we can keep the perspective on what's available out there and the picture of that emergency as broad as possible. If I do, we did just get another question. How do you plan on connecting it with WebEOC? It's already done through Exchange Core. Uh, there is a WebEOC board that is the Saber status board that is freely available. You can download that. Uh, and uh, the, there's a connector between Exchange Core and uh, WebEOC. Uh, and the, the board, um, I won't poke around. I didn't show you a picture. It was pretty straightforward, tabular form uh, of business status, name of the business, uh, when they were closed, and a couple other elements. Uh, but using some of the the board-to-board uh, -board replication uh, that WebEOC offers. Uh, you can use that board to bring in all the standard information from Saber about anything and then map the content on that board off to a number of other uh, or any of the other boards that you do. And I'm not a WebEOC expert, have only seen that done. 
uh, send you the link to download where I can actually if you will send me if you could sign up over here on the saberspace.org uh, and then there's a tab called enroll or ask if you can do that I'll have all the information and I'll definitely uh, get you the board hi Brian uh, I let's see let me maybe you can talk Brian I'll uh, I am Clicked unmute. Okay. I'm click okay, Brian, you should be able to speak now. You there, Brian? If you're talking and I'm not hearing you, it's another one of those silly things. Oh, there we go. Yes. All right, good. Now I'm hearing you. I was connected to something wrong. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, this is Joe with a question. Oh, Joe, okay. Yeah, you know, with the, earlier you mentioned, and this is all for business establishments, open or closed, but if we open it up to government buildings, institutions, uh, critical infrastructure, let's say gas, electricity, fuel, and so forth, does this uh, tool or capability have basically layers where you can filter out these other entities so that you're not looking at a whole hodgepodge on one diagram, but rather can filter out and look at what you might be interested in? Yes. Uh, that The filter when I, I search for only closed, uh, that would be the same thing if you said water. You're only going to see water and you filter everything out. And um, actually just, if I just come over here, let's put this down um, and just pop up the, the filter. Yep. Yeah, the, the filter over here, uh, you can you build your own terms, you add them in. There are two different levels uh, that you can do, both of them having a Boolean knot. So I can go in and eliminate multiple layers. Uh, it's It will give you the ability to uh, hone in on the exactly the information that you want to see. Thanks, Phil. Uh, yeah. One, one other quick question. This sure. capability does have and have or contain a lot of information or data. Does it or how long does it keep that data for uh, purposes of digging in later on? Everything on Saber we archive daily. Uh, so it's available in a nice clean uh, JSON format. Uh, and as a result, have a modest amount of history because we've started looking at uh, history for some analytics. But in the future, every exercise uh, and uh, real emergency we go through, there will be a collected set coming off of Saber. Side so of spot on response, we have been saving exercises for the California Earthquake Clearinghouse and probably a half a dozen other organizations or emergencies. Uh, that we can go back to and look at. In fact, our training content for spot on response is uh, the Golden Guardian exercise from 2014 or 15 in California. So you see about 200 different uses of the software uh, as part of that. So good, good output of data in the future and some historical records already. Thank you. Is there a retention policy then? A retention policy? Uh, we, we personally for Sabre are retaining everything because we will we envision being able to do much more with that data. Uh, for a client, we'll retain it as long as they want to retain it. So it's very much, very much uh, driven by the end user. Let's see, I see a qu another question over here. Um, Brian says, says he signed up for Saberspace. Uh, how did you get the app? Uh, we'll be putting out uh, this coming week when we release the, uh, the little guide uh, to it. Uh, it'll have all the information on, on how to grab that, so I'll make sure that you're on that list. Uh, and um, cybersecurity with a platform, uh, have we had any issues? No, we have had no issues so far. All this is hosted on the Google Cloud. 
uh, 128 or 256 bit encryption depending on what server you happen to be on. Uh, every exchange between the uh, browser and the site is a HTTPS encryption uh, and um, so it's, it's as good as your banking is what I like to say. And let me thank all of you for joining up today. Uh, please enroll. Let's get them app uh, really pushed out there over the next 10 days or so until our meeting on the 23rd and then we can get lots of play during that exercise as people go in and open and close, create limited status, give us information on the, the what and the why and thank you for your attention. Uh, look forward to catching up with you again on the 23rd.